you've written an article about um, Jack Campbell and his contract moving forward. I think it's probably the number one priority for the Leafs is for them to figure out what they're going to do in net. I don't think you can move on beyond that until you figure out that position. It's the most important position in the sport. So what is your read on right. maybe the first move for the Maple Leafs? How are they going to approach this between now and free agency? It's a tricky one, right? Because I, I still think it can go a couple directions uh, with their goaltending. I mean, you, look, you have two NHL spots. Right now one of them is, is eaten up by – the $3.8 million on, on Peter Mrazek's contract. You know, it's not a mystery or to think that the Leafs will explore ways they might be able to get out from under that deal, that they put Peter Mrazek on waivers on trade deadline day or the day before, trying to entice someone to take him for free. You know, everyone passed. But you know, I think that, that that will be a factor in whatever happens because if if he's back making $3.8 million, I just don't see how they could ever pay Jack Campbell what his market value is going to be, you know, to, to have those guys as a tandem again. Um, you know, if, if you're getting rid of Morazic, what does it cost in terms of another, you know, prospect or, you know, draft picks or what have you, you know, in terms of trying to get teams to take that on. And then in the middle of all this, you know, Jack Campbell's a player. Let's remember, he's 12 years on from when he was drafted 11th overall. Right. And this was, this was the first season in his career, finally, where he played more than half his team's games in the NHL, you know, where he's a number one guy after a long, long time relative to his peers and what guys make. He, he hasn't made that much money. And this is his opportunity, you know, to, to cash in, so to speak, or to, to get what he's worth. He's, he's reached a different stage of his career. He's 30 years old. And so what I think is interesting in terms of the dynamic here is, okay, the Leafs are juggling a few different balls in terms of what they do at that position. But on top of that, you, you have a player that I, I think, you know, it's fair to say the Leafs like, and, and, and he likes here. But you know, it's, they, they talked contract with his agent last summer and, and couldn't get anywhere. And, you know, I'm not certain. It's, it's too soon to say – where this will go, but I don't think it's unfair to sort of point out that this one might be a difficult one for, for the two sides to find, you know, happy ground uh, because yeah. a, a number of goaltenders as noodles will know that that are kind of in Jack Campbell's range of signed for about 5 million a year in the last 12 months. And I would expect he's looking for something similar. And unless the Leafs can get out from Morazic and come up with a second, another second option that's cheaper. I, I, I just don't see how they pay him $5 million to stay. I agree. Like we were talking about it the other day and I'm everything is about comparables and what a team is willing to pay for your services. But this is a unique one based on his age, based on how much he's played, you know, in his career this year, he played 49 games in the regular season because of an injury, because of other things, but that's his career high. I, I look at him as kind of that tandem goaltender. And you just mentioned 5 million range. That's kind of the Robin Leonard neighborhood. Now, Leonard had a couple years where, you know, the numbers were really good. And, and same thing with Jack Campbell. But it's just, you know, can the Leafs afford that number? Do they want him on term at that number? There's so many different things. Or, you know, do you want that Carolina model where it's, you've walked away from your goaltenders, you move them, and you start over? But it'll all come in. This this is the multi-million dollar question for us, guys, is, if Jack Campbell doesn't like what he sees in this particular situation, this is a business. He might get an offer from somebody else, and it might be the Philip Grubauer situation. Where it's like Philip Grubauer left Colorado, left a team that's a cup favorite to right. go and get to go and get more money. Now I understand it, I respect it because you know when you run the numbers, it's about a ten extra million dollars for Grubauer guaranteed. So it's not it's a peanuts. lot of money. That's a, lot, a lot of, of money. money, but you're getting hazard pay going over to Seattle. Like keep that in mind. The grass, you know, grass may be greener in cash, but it's not going to be greener in, you know, wins and, and, you know, trying to get to the ultimate guaranteed prize money though. doesn't that's, matter where your stats are, but that that's money's guaranteed. So Jack's got to sort that out. Does he want to run it back here? Um, you know, have an opportunity with the Leafs on a very good team and his numbers look pretty good if he can hold up and all that? Or do you go to a team that, you know, wants to give you a little bit more, maybe a little bit more security, but, man, it could look ugly for a year or two. Right. It's, it's an interesting dance on both ends. You know, it, the one thing, if you're Campbell, it's, it's the easiest thing for me to understand. Obviously, never been a pro athlete, but if he can go make a lot more money somewhere else, I, I would never hold that against him. Like, like I understood why Zach yeah. Hyman left Toronto because, you know, the Leafs just couldn't pay him that. It's not, they loved the guy. He loved it here. You know, his family's from here. He'll probably live in Toronto the rest of his life post career, but it just didn't, they, they didn't match up business wise. And so if, if that's what 
or you know prompts Jack to leave. Should he leave? That that makes sense to me. But if if, if he's having second thoughts and and you know the team's got to, I mean I, I I'm Jamie. I'm from the the, the goaltending is voodoo camp a little bit. I I, I have a hard <laughs> time. Well, you know when people ask like okay if they move on from Jack Campbell who are they going to sign? And look I can look at the free agent list like anyone else. There's guys that are free agents this year that have had tons of success in the league that have won Stanley Cups. Like, I don't know what the answer is. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a difficult question, but it's a huge decision. Obviously if you're Toronto, because like Carolina a year ago, I know they were nervous. You know, they brought in Frederick Anderson and anti Ranta, but they had a good team and you bring in two goalies. You just don't know how it's going to go. It went pretty well for them this year, even though they're, they're kind of dealing with the injury situation with Freddie now. Um, but you know, if, if you do, if the Leafs do end up bringing in two new goaltenders, which I don't think is impossible, you have this great team, you have everything you did this year, but but it could all be sunk if that you know if those decisions don't work for you, and that's that's sort of what I think the Leafs are going to have to work through here in the next six, seven, eight weeks. Yeah, well, I'm curious with how Shanahan and Dubas explained everything on Tuesday, explained their own viewing of what happened this year and into the playoffs, and their own impressions of it. And even though they lost in the first round, you know, Shanahan was trying to paint it somewhat of a positive picture and felt like they were on their toes this year as opposed to their heels. Again, it doesn't mean anything, but I guess if that's right. your evaluation, so, you know, so be it. But wouldn't Jack Campbell apply there too? Like, in other words, if they felt good about the whole process and Campbell was a primary part of it, you're not going to make change for the sake of change then shouldn't it be a priority to bring back Campbell? Like, where where do you draw the line on them loving their team, even though they don't win anything, and wanting to effectively run it back, which we'll see if that's actually true or not, without, like, one of the three or four main pillars, the starting goalie, guy who was your guy all year? Well, it's just down to dollars and cents, I think. You know, Jack Campbell made, what, about $1.7 million this year, so they, they paid roughly $5.5 million in NHL money for their goaltending. I mean, potentially he's getting almost that much himself. And so I think the decision largely is dollars and cents. I mean, there might be an element of performance in there. Um, but, you know, if he's if he's looking to get what, you know, Allmark got in Boston, which is $5 million. You yeah. know, Cal Wilson signed for $5 million in L.A. Merzlikin signed for five point four in Columbus. Uh, you know, Saros got $5 million in Nashville. You know, if, if, he's, if he can get into that range... I just I really have a hard time seeing how they do it because you know obviously they they still have to try to upgrade. They've got RFA contracts for Sandine and Liljegren and, and uh, Pierre Engvall. You know I, I, there's only so much to go around, and so I, I do think ultimately it just might be a financial you know situation where you've got a player in this case. You know like Mark Giordano might stick here because he doesn't need to make money, right? He's trying to win a Stanley Cup and he likes playing in his hometown much like we've seen from Jason Spezza in the last few seasons. I mean, I could see a scenario where he stays probably a little bit below what he could get if he wanted to hit the open market. I think Jack Campbell almost has no choice but to get market value just yeah. because you know, he hasn't maximized his value at this point. And so that's that's sort of where it seems to me like it's at. I mean, there's still time here. I, I don't think everything's still pretty fresh and raw in terms of the, the loss. Like, no decisions have been reached. But, you know, it's just hard to see the path to where – he gets what he needs at this point in his career and they keep the number where they need it to. And so that's, that's what I think it comes down to. I mean, fans probably don't like hearing this stuff. I mean, it's really down to the hard cap league. Uh, I right. think, I think in an alternate universe, if, if we remember pre 2005, like back in the old days, the Leafs probably would have kept time in last summer. And, and if they didn't have, you know, if they could go above the cap, if there was no cap, you'd probably sign all the guys you like. And, and it's a different sort of league. But now I think, more difficult business decisions have to be reached by teams that are trying to compete. And, you know, ultimately it might, might price him and might price McKay out of town. And, and we've seen that over the years, whether way back to JVR, Bozak, Gardner, all these guys were sort of let to walk because the beliefs couldn't pay them what they were going to get somewhere else. Yeah, no. And that's, that's totally understandable. I, I guess my concern for the Leafs would be that that's not the position that you mess with. Right. It, it, you can replace Zach Hyman. You did with Bunting. And maybe you can replace Jack Campbell. I'm not saying you can't replace him or even find an upgrade. But right. it's likely going to cost you something to do that. Like the idea of them concluding, okay, had to sign Riley, got to keep the four up front. Let's find a couple of goalies at a million apiece or whatever it's going to be. Man, that's a gamble. Like, because you, you might have the makings of a great team 
lines one through four, deep pairings one through three. If you've got goaltending that's bottom third in the league, you can't win. You cannot uh, win. So yeah. it's right. a gamble. You might get man. everything else right, but that, but that will dictate how we're talking about next season. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. I, I think it just it'll be interesting to see. I don't know. I mean, they're pretty tight lipped and you know that CJ like it, it was a cone of silence on both sides. If any information comes out about, you know, what Campbell's camp is looking for and, you know, what they're willing to, to, to give, that'll be interesting because to see how far apart they are or if they can bridge the gap and just make it happen and, and make everyone happy for both camps if they, if that's what the Leafs want to do. Right. Well, I mean, look, his agent is Kurt Overhard, who's traditionally done a good job for his clients in terms of maximizing what they can earn. And so that's not to say, look, you, you've been in that situation. A player can instruct his agent what to do, but if it comes down to the agent, I think it's going to be a, a difficult negotiation to find common ground given where the two sides are at.